ever realise that there are millions of pieces of garbage above your head? The size of an ant, an apple, a bus? You can't see it? It's normal, the trash is hundreds of kilometres away, in space. As if polluting the Earth wasn't enough, us humans are also polluting the galaxy by sending satellites and rockets into space where we just leave them, even when they're no longer in use. 4 1957. It all started with the Russian satellite Sputnik in 1957, followed by a raft of tests, including accidents and failures by both the Russians and Americans in the famous space race of the Cold War. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. All of the problems linked to debris were hugely underestimated during the first 30 years of space activity. And now we're paying the price today. Now we understand very well the errors that we should avoid. The problem is we can't go back in time. Just how much waste is there, though? Well, one British researcher has tried to give us an idea in this video of garbage accumulated since the 1950s. Nearly 30,000 objects the size of a fist, 750,000 a centimetre large, and 150 million no bigger than a millimetre. And not all of it is simply careless. In March this year, India intentionally destroyed one of its satellites with a missile, causing an extra 400 pieces of debris, a move that didn't impress NASA. That is a terrible, terrible thing to create an event that sends debris in an apogee that goes above the International Space Station. And that kind of activity is not compatible with the future of human spaceflight that we need to see have happen. The risk is obvious. The more of these objects in space, the more likely they are to hit each other. And I should mention, sometimes this debris does fall back to Earth. Last year, China's first space station, the Tiangong-1, re-entered the Earth's atmosphere uncontrolled. Most of it burned up during the descent, but certain pieces landed in the Pacific Ocean, not too far from a site that's been officially designated as a spacecraft cemetery. When a satellite re-enters the atmosphere in a controlled or uncontrolled way, it rubs against the ambient air molecules and it starts to break apart and then melt. When a satellite is large and potentially dangerous, if possible, we direct it towards the south of the Pacific, an area known as Nemo's Point, the place furthest away from humans that we can find on Earth. So far, there's never been a victim of space debris on Earth, and experts say the chances of you specifically being hit are 1 in 21 trillion. Everyone seems to agree, though, that it's time to clean it up. The priority for space agencies is the waste closest to us, that's between 0 and 2,000 kilometres away, because that's where it's most concentrated. It's there, for example, where the International Space Station has to reposition four to five times per year just to avoid a collision. Most of the projects are based on the same idea. Find a way to bring the waste back to Earth using technology, such as robots or giant fishing nets, None of these projects lack imagination, but many of them are at a standstill due to a lack of funds, largely because there are no laws requiring countries to clean up after themselves. Our guest, Thomas Peske, spent six months in space in 2017, where he saw the pollution firsthand. All the debris that are bigger than um, um, two euros coin, they're tracked by radar, so we know where they're going, we know where we're going, we can avoid them. Um, and most of the time, um, we, can, we can always anticipate. Whenever there's a potential conflict, we can maneuver the space station. Um, and it happens maybe twice every year, probably. If in those, in those unlikely cases where we cannot anticipate, we would retreat to our Soyuzes, our vehicles, um, which are all life raft to come back to Earth, and we wait for the debris to pass. To me, it's it's mostly security because uh, because it's inert, right? It's 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 not like you're not polluting. 
um, nature. It's, it's completely void. It's void of any form of life, vegetable, animal, or anything. So it's not like on Earth throwing your garbage out in the forest. That would be actively polluting some forms of life. But for us, it's just um, shards of metals or pieces of metals uh, in the emptiness of space. So it's not nice. It's not, we shouldn't do it. By all means, we should avoid doing it. Um, but we're not threatening life by doing this except our own life and by our own life i mean the astronaut's life or you know creating danger for those satellites that we choose to still send up to space some say we should be thinking about space waste from the moment we start to build a satellite for example they could be designed in a way that would allow them to self-destruct into dust after use far-fetched perhaps but so too was the prospect of man landing on the moon.